Number one has us looking at a regular pentagon that has side lengths of seven inches. And it wants us to come up with the perimeter and the area of this pentagon. Um, so perimeter, we know that each of the sides is seven inches long and there are five sides. So we know that the perimeter is going to be seven times five or 35 inches. And then for the area, we are going to actually split this pentagon up into smaller triangles that we can then find the area of. So we're going to be able to split this into five equal triangles going from the center of the pentagon out to the vertices. And that allows us to find the central angle here. Okay, so this kind of bigger angle here, which is going to be 360 divided by 5, um, which gives us a central angle of 72. And then we're going to find the area of each of these smaller triangles. So we're going to need to do the height of one of these smaller triangles. And therefore, we're going to have to cut this central angle um, in half to figure out this actual angle. So that's going to be 72 divided by 2, which is going to give us 36 for this angle. Then what we're going to do is we're going to find the area of this kind of smaller triangle here. So let me um, highlight it. So we're going to find the area of this triangle here. So we know um, that this length right here is half of the whole side. So we know that this length here is 3.5. And then we're going to want to find this height. So we can do base times height divided by 2. So this 3.5 is the um, opposite side. So opposite of that, 36 degrees. And the H is the adjacent side. So we'll be able to um, set up a tangent function. So we'll do tangent of 36 equals um, 3.5 over H. So we'll be able to multiply by H to both sides and then divide by tan 36. So we'll type in 3.5 divided by tangent of 36 into our calculator to get that our height is about 4.8. So this measurement right here is um, 4.8. So now we'll be able to find the area of this orange triangle here. And so we'll do base, which is 3.5, times the height of that triangle, which is 4.8, divided by 2. So 3.5 times 4.8 divided by 2 gives us 8.4 units squared for this little orange triangle. Then we know that this triangle will fit in to this pentagon two times per side. So we'll have 10 of these fit into the whole pentagon. So then we'll take this area and multiply it by the 10 triangles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times it will fit in there. And we'll get the area of the pentagon is about 84 units squared. All right, then number two has us looking at an expression that we looked at in lesson 11. Um, this n times sine of 360 over 2n, which approximates pi by giving the perimeter of a regular polygon inscribed in a circle with radius 1. So what does N stand for? So N is the number of sides that the polygon has. And then we're going to be using um, a 60-sided polygon to estimate pi and tell the difference between that and pi. So if you type pi in your calculator, 
you'll get a decimal of 3.14159 and it continues on, but we're just gonna use that. And then we'll look at approximating the, um, approximating pi with this formula. So we'll do N, which is 60, times sine of 360 divided by two times N. So two times 60 is 120. So we'll type in 60 times the sine of N 360 divided by 120 is three. So we'll type this in our calculator. And when we type this in our calculator, we get um, 3.14 zero one five and then it wants to know the difference between pi and this number so we'll take actual um, the actual decimal that we got for pi and we'll subtract off this approximation and we'll find out that we get a difference of zero point zero zero one four four so we're just over one one thousandth of a decimal off with this approximation. Number three, a regular hexagon has a side length of two inches. What's the perimeter and what's the area of this hexagon? So let's um, draw out a regular hexagon here. So here's a regular hexagon. Um, so what is the perimeter of this hexagon? Well, we know that each of the side lengths are two and they're all the same. So two times six equals 12 units for the perimeter. Now we wanna find the area. So for the area, we're gonna take one of these kind of central triangles here. So you could fit six of those in. And then we're gonna drop a height and find the area, whoops, a height and find the area of this little triangle and multiply by how many times it fits into our whole hexagon. Um, so a couple of things we know on this little triangle is that it's half of one of the sides. So that's one. And we can find um, this angle here. So this larger angle, um, there's six of them that will fit into the hexagon. So that's gonna give us 60 degrees for that larger blue angle, then when we cut it in half, we'll get 30 degrees for this angle. So now we're gonna find the area of this little triangle. Let me just draw it over here. Now this one we know is a 30, 60, 90 triangle because we see the 30 and the 90. So we know that this leg is just square root of three times longer than the short leg. So if this is one, then this is square root three. So when we find the area of this triangle, we're gonna do base times height divided by two. So the area of this triangle is just square root of three over two. And then we know that two of these triangles fit per side. So we're gonna get two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 of these triangles to fit in the whole hexagon. So the area um, of the hexagon is gonna be 12 square root three over two. And we could divide these to get six square root three units squared for the area. And then you could certainly multiply that out also and get 10.39 units squared. So whichever of those two versions you like best. Number four, an airplane travels 125 miles horizontally um, and then during during a decrease of nine miles vertically so then we're going to decrease nine miles vertically what is um, the angle of descent so we're looking for um, we've got that this is 125 we know that this is 90 and then we're decreasing nine here and then we're looking for this angle of descent here. And so we know that the nine is the opposite side. 
So this is the opposite side and next to it is the adjacent side. So we'll be able to do a, an arctan function. So arctan is opposite over adjacent. And then this is the same as tan negative one in your calculator. So get that typed in. So do the tan negative one of nine over 125. And for that, you will get um, about four degrees. So your angle of descent is four degrees. Then it wants us to solve for the plane's um, distance for its path. So this is where the plane is flying, is along this orange line here. So that, um, we could just do Pythagorean theorem. So d squared equals 125 squared plus nine squared. So D squared is equal to, and 125 squared is 15,625, and nine squared is 81. So when we add those together, we get 15,706. And then you can just square root that, and you'll get 125.3 miles. All right, number five asks us to select all true statements here. First one they start with is um, finding the length of AC. And so we know that we could do Pythagorean theorem here by squaring the legs and adding them together. So five squared is 25, 12 squared is 144. So this is gonna be the square root of 169, not 119, which is actually 13. So then we find out that B is correct. Okay, so square root of 169 is 13. C asks us for the cosine of theta. So remember, cosine is the adjacent side, which would be 12 over the hypotenuse 13. So this is wrong. So cosine of theta should be 12 over 13. Um, sine of alpha. So sine should be the opposite side, which is 12 over the hypotenuse, which is 13. So this one is good. And then um, theta equals the arc tan. So tan, remember, is opposite. So opposite of theta is five over adjacent, which is 12. So E would be correct for finding theta, arc tan of five over 12. Number six, write two equations using sine and two equations using cosine based on this triangle. So I'm going to write um, a sine equation here for 24. So sine of 24 would equal the opposite side, which is y, over the hypotenuse, which is 7. And then using 24, I'm also going to write a cosine equation. So cosine of 24 equals the adjacent side, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 7. Then I'm going to go ahead and write equations for the 66 degree angle. So sine of 66, the opposite of 66 is now x, and the hypotenuse is 7. And then the cosine of 66, the adjacent is now the y, and the hypotenuse is seven. So that gives us two cosine equations and two sine equations. Number seven, we have an equilateral triangle that has an area of 36 root three square units. What is the side length? Um, so we can look at doing the area here. So we're looking for, um, the side length, right? And so we know that when we're doing the area, it's gonna be this measurement times the height, so base times height divided by two. So I'm just gonna call this piece X. We know that in an equilateral triangle, it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle when we split to find the altitude. 
So this short leg, this um, height is going to be the leg times the square root of 3. So now if I go ahead and do the area of this triangle, okay, remember area is going to be the base, which in this case is actually two X's. So it's going to be 2X base times the height, which is X root 3. Um, divided by 2. So this is base times height divided by 2. And then we actually know our area already, which is 36 root 3. So I'm going to plug that in for the area. So we have 36 root 3. And then let's just simplify over here. So we see a factor of 2 on the top and the bottom. So I'm just going to cancel those. Then we have x times x, which is x squared times the square root of 3. So then we see um, that we've got a root 3 in both pieces taken care of. So then that means that x squared actually equals this um, 64, or sorry, this 36. So x squared equals 36. Um, so x would equal 6. And now x is just... Um, part of the side here. Okay, so x is just this. So what is the side length is going to be two of those. So the side um, length to get this would be 12.